Jimmy Butler's 47 points, a part of his LeBron-esque Game 6 performance at the Boston Garden, was fairly shocking considering in the three games prior, he scored just 27. The difficulty of eliminating one of the best players on earth in Jimmy G may have been something the Celtics underestimated, but it was the bounce-back performances from the backcourt of Kyle Lowry and Max Struess, which were also surprising factors on the evening. You truly never know what you're going to get from this Heat team or their opponents in the Celtics, making this series frustratingly confusing and the inconsistencies on a game-to-game -game basis from the number one seeded Miami Heat's top players are a massive part of that. You're about to see a film room breakdown on Jimmy Butler's mind-blowing near 50 piece. Before continuing, just 11.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Shockingly, after scoring 8 points in Game 3, 6 points in Game 4, and 13 points in Game 5, Jimmy G Buckets posted the 7th highest single game total in an elimination game of all time. Butler led the Heat with 47 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists, and 4 steals, shooting 16 for 29 from the floor and 4 of 8 from 3 point range. He became the first player in NBA playoff history with such a stat line on 50% shooting or better, according to Stathead. His 47 points were also the most in Heat playoff history in an elimination game. Something about Game 6s in the Eastern Conference Finals, down 3-2 in Boston, instantly drew comparisons of LeBron showing back in 2012, as in the Conference Finals 10 years ago, Boston was also up 3-2 at home, but I can remember it vividly to this day when LBJ walked into Beantown and absolutely lit up any defender put in front of him, and Jimmy's performance definitely gave me flashbacks of that. Butler's freshness despite battling right knee inflammation was evident right off the bat, here he gets a screen on the left, getting a quick first step to that offhand, and watch how he freezes Grant Williams with a slight hezzy, plants his left pivot foot, and uses that momentum to spin back to his strong side. Beautiful footwork. After a blistering drive from the greatest Raptor of all time, Lowry kicks it out to Butler, and the legs he gets on this spot-up triple allow Jimmy to easily will in the shot from beyond the arc, and despite not being a three-point shooter, Butler knocked down four deep-range bombs on Friday, Boston's perimeter defense may want to start checking him out there. We'll get to the Jordan-esque shot creation, but aside from that, the best part about Jimmy's repertoire is his aptitude in the passing lanes. Resembling an NFL corner, Butler's ability to read and react to playmakers allows him to stun passers with interceptions and generally blitz the passing lanes with his focus, athleticism, and IQ. Watch how he quickly looks at Al Horford here, then he looks at the entire Boston offensive setup, intentionally leaves Jalen Brown open, and picks off Big Al's kickout. Taking advantage of the poor Celtic spacing and lazy passing, Butler's able to leave Brown open again here, and he just tears apart this pick and roll set from Boston. Next, leading to his second steal on Al Horford, Boston simply has to be wary of Butler's defensive ability as he times this steal perfectly, as Horford practically hands it right to him, but give credit to the dominant catch in traffic, burst up the court, and beastly finish in transition for the N1 from Butler. Combining that defense with his ability to manufacture offense off the bounce, and you see why people are calling him the best player in these Eastern Conference Finals. What'll go overlooked about the 47 piece is the eight assists Butler also had. Here, he drives into his jab step, bodies off smart which draws the attention of four Celtic defenders before locating a wide open Caleb Martin. Then he sets a screen for Kyle Lowry like he's a big man, again Boston's defense overcommits, and a slick feed to the corner gives PJ Tucker a wide open look in his favorite spot from the left corner. Mostly the Celtics defense overcommitted on the fast break, as watch these two beautiful trailer drop offs which led to easy dunks for Struess and then Adebayo back to the individual bucket getting, and after missing a layup due to the presence of Rob Williams, he gets the switch onto the DPOY, and look at all the elevation Butler gets on this nasty little teardrop in traffic. The nicest drive of the night though was this one on RW3, where Butler speeds past the versatile center, hangs in the air to the opposite side, and his soft touch around the basket is proven with how the ball just hangs on the rim and falls through. Just nasty. Putting Derek White on an island, 
two basic crossovers and a momentum crossover to his right, leading directly into a fallaway, makes for some barbecue chicken. To close it out, Butler began the fourth with a couple fallaway jumpers in the face of Grant Williams and then Al Horford, and then he started relentlessly attacking the basket off the dribble with unstoppable finishes through contact. And with just two seconds on the shot clock, with Struess inbounding, Butler shimmies to his left and fades to his right, pulling off the shot clock cheese with a fadeaway dagger. Stunning the basketball universe by responding to Ime Udoka's adjustments, the response from Boston in Game 7 is going to be compelling to watch, considering they'd already made a ton of adjustments to stop Butler before Game 6. As I mentioned in my breakdown after Game 5, the Heat's backcourt had the worst playoff performance from a point and shooting guard combined since 1970, but Game 6 was a totally different story. The legend for my Raptors and Kyle Lowry bounced back from his zero-point effort in Game 5, tallying 18 points on 5 for 14 shooting with 4 triples, adding 10 dimes, 4 boards, 1 steal, and a block. Max Struess finished with 13 points on 5 for 12 shooting from deep, snapping out of his abrupt shooting slump. PJ Tucker had 11 points on 3 of 4 shooting, in addition to 5 rebounds, 1 assist, and 2 steals. Bam Adebayo had just 6 points, but he was dominant defensively, and he hauled in 9 boards with a steal, and he finished as a team high plus 12. The ref's whistle was certainly questionable on both sides. The Heat got the favorable calls down the stretch, but that can't be an excuse for Boston. Miami's trailing Boston in total free throws for the series, and if you rewatch the final minutes of Game 6, down the stretch, Boston's offense went completely stagnant. In the clutch, the Celtics can't have the ball stick so much like it did on Friday night. As Miami Heat coach Eric Spolstra said after his team nodded this series up at three, the best two words in sports are Game 7, and I don't know about you, but I'm damn hyped for what should be a dramatic battle for the Eastern Conference title. I want to know what your predictions are for Sunday night, though. Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shoutout to Irvin Alexar Guerra, who says, I think that Kevon Looney is the most underrated Golden State Warrior right now. The fact that he covered more ground per minute than one of the greatest players in regards of off-ball movement in Steph Curry is remarkable. Add on the fact that he has to defend the paint, including the two-time MVP in Jokic these playoffs, while carrying the load of playing 82 games this season without their center of the future in James Wiseman. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.